Hi, I'm Geraldo, a senior PhD student at the Terra Azul, and today I'm going to talk about our work Pluto, enabling massively parallel computation in DRAM via lookup tables. This work has been published at Micro 2022. So let's get started. A growing number of processing memory architectures have been proposed in recent years to address a growing data movement bottleneck that affects many modern applications. Two important classes of processing memory exist. Processing near memory, which adds logic elements near memory arrays, and processing using memory, which uses the analog properties of memory arrays for computation. While processing using memory adopted by multiple memory technologies, in this talk, I will focus on processing using DRAM. Existing processing using DRAM architecture provides very high throughput and energy efficiency. However, they only support a limited set of operations, which limits their applicability. Based on these observations, our goal in this work is to extend the applicability of processing using DRAM architectures by designing a processing using DRAM substrate that supports complex operations. To this end, we describe Pluto, a processing using DRAM substrate that replaces complex operations with equivalent memory lookups. The Pluto loop query operation is the core of Pluto. This is the operation that enables book in DRAM table lookups in DRAM. We provide three different Pluto designs, each targeting different performance, energy, and, trade, and area trade-offs. We also provide an end-to-end -end system integration. We evaluate uh, Pluto and compare it against three uh, process-centric uh, process designs. Our evaluation shows that Pluto achieves between one and three orders of magnitude higher speed-ups relative to the baseline system while incurring a small area of our infrastructure is publicly available in our GitHub repository. So this is the outline for my talk. First, I'm going to introduce our problem motivation. Second, I'm going to describe our solution, including its hardware design and system integration. Third, I'm going to present a summary of our evaluation results. And finally, I'm going to conclude. So let's get started. Data movement is a major bottleneck in modern systems. This is due to the bandwidth limit and power-hungry nature of the memory channel that connects the main memory to the computing units of conventional systems. In fact, recent works have shown that the majority of the system's energy is taken by data movement. To address the data movement bottlenecks, prior works have proposed processing using memory architectures, where computation is done by adding extra logic near memory devices, what we call processing near memory, or computation is done by the analog, using the analog properties of DRAM cells to do computation, what we call processing using memory. This work will focus on a subset of processing using memory solutions that uses DRAM for computation, which we call such uh, architectures processing using DRAM. While the processing using DRAM approach often provides the highest throughput and energy, energy efficiency, the range of operations that this architecture support is very limited limiting uh, the range of operations supported by prior processing using memory architectures is limited to data movement, bitwise operations, bit shifting operations, and arithmetic operations. This limits the potential of processing using memory architecture for a subset of application domain, applications and applications domain. Therefore, our goal in this work is to extend the processing using DRAM to support the execution of arbitrary complex operations. With this goal in mind, we propose Pluto, First, I'm going to explain the key idea behind our solution. Conventional architecture employ dedicated arithmetic logic units to transform input elements and perform computation. ILU takes as input arbitrary input X and perform a given function to transform the input into the appropriate output. In Pluto, we take another approach where instead of transforming an input via arithmetic operations, we store in a table pre-computed mappings of input elements to output elements. Thus, computation can be performed by simply consulting the mapping table, which produces the target uh, output. In summary, in Pluto, we replace computation with memory access to lookup tables, which we implement using Pluto lookup table query operation. To illustrate Pluto's operation, I will go over the execution of a simple operation in Pluto. We begin by clearly defining the operation we want to replace. In this example, we want to compute the second, first, second, and fourth prime numbers. To do so, we use a pre-computed lookup table in which rows, rows stores an order of sequence of prime numbers. For example, the first row stores the first prime number, which is two. 
Rows in the lookup table are indexed to use a lookup look table index from 0 to 3. Our loot query operation creates a mapping between the required inputs and the loot index. In this example, the second prime number corresponds to the loot, in, loot index 1. The first prime number corresponds to loot index 0. And again, the second prime number corresponds to loot index 1. And finally, the fourth prime number corresponds to loot index 3. This mapping is stored in the input vector, which will be used to index the lookup table. In Pluto, we store the lookup table as an in-memory lookup table. Now you are ready to start the Pluto lookup table query operation. The output of the operation will be stored in the output vector. The Pluto lookup query, loot query operation uses the input vector to index the in-memory lookup table. In this example, the first element of the input vector is 1, which is used to index the in-memory lookup table at row with loot, loot ID 1. This index the operation returning 3, which is the second prime number. The output uh, is then stored in the output vector. This process repeats until all the elements of the input vector have been used to index the in-memory lookup table. We implemented this lookup table query operation in DRAM. To do so, we map each component of the loot query operation I just mentioned to the other components of a DRAM bank. It starts with the input and output vectors, which are mapped to DRAM row buffers. Then we use the accessing circuitry of DRAM, in particular the DRAM row decoder and row buffer, to support the indexing step of the loot query operation. Put adds a match logic, which compares the elements of the input vector to the addresses of the, of the row decoder. This match, match logic controls a set of access transistors that give access to the output vector. The elements of the loot uh, table are stored in, DRAM, in the DRAM array. And we, uh, this allows Pluto to exploit the DRAM parallelism to perform book lookup table query operations. To perform a loot query operation, Pluto uses a new DRAM comment called row sweep. This comment allows the sequence access of the rows in the DRAM array. After setting up a Pluto loot, uh, loot query operation, we are ready to start computing. First, the row sweep operation access the first row of the lookup look, look table, which, uh, which copies the content of the DRAM array to the row buffer. The match logic will then check if the current uh, row being accessed corresponds to the row index stored in the input vector, resulting in a mismatch for the first element of the uh, input vector. but a match for the second element of the input vector, which asserts the access transistors in the second position of the output vector, connecting and copying such positions of the row buffer to the output vector. This process repeats for the third element of the input vector, leading to a mismatch, and finally to the fourth element of the input vector, also leading to a mismatch. Next, the row sweep operation moves to the next theorem row, which corresponds to the loot index 1, which leads to a match between the first and third elements in the input vector, and consequently a, a copy of the first and third elements of the row buffer to the output vector. The row sweep moves the, to the next row, resulting in no matches, and finally to the last row, resulting in a match for the fourth element of the input array. This completes the Pluto loot, loot query operation in Zira. Next, I'm going to talk about our Pluto designs. In this work, we implement three different designs to support Pluto loot query operations. These designs this design mostly differs on how they handle the operation of the output vector. In the first design, output elements are latched in auxiliary flip-flops, which any call the design, the buffer sense amplifier design. In the second design, we use the system amplifiers in the row buffer to latch the output elements. We call this design gated system amplifier. And in the third design, we use the DRAM cells themselves to store the output elements. We call this design gated memory cell. These three designs lead to different trade-offs in terms of performance, energy, and error efficiency. With the buffer system amplifier providing the moderate performance, energy, and error efficiency, the gated sense amplifier design providing the lowest performance and energy efficiency by the highest in energy efficiency, area efficiency, and the gated memory cell design providing the highest performance and energy efficiency at the cost of low area efficiency. We conclude that Pluto designs cover a broad design space. 
Next, I'm going to briefly talk about Pluto system integration. Pluto system integration is composed of Pluto APIs, which are C-like codes that the programmer uses to invoke a given loop operation. Pluto ISA extensions, which are low-level assembly code generated by the Pluto compiler when translating Pluto API calls, and, and the drum commands, which the Pluto controller generates based on the Pluto ISA extensions to generate an interim loop query operation. You can find more details about our proposed system integration stack in your paper. Next, I'm going to summarize our evaluations. We compare Pluto with three baselines, a CPU, a GPU, and a processor near memory system. We implement Pluto using an in-house simulator, which is available in our GitHub repository. We evaluate several different methods, including performance, energy, energy consumption, and area overheads, and circuit level reliability. Due to the time limitations, I can, I'm going to cover only a subset of those, focus on performance and energy efficiency. We use seven real workloads and four synthetic workloads in your analysis. In terms of performance, on average across all of workloads, Pluto achieves up to 1,400, 1400 times the performance of the, of the CPU, two times the performance of a GPU, and 36 times the performance of a processed near memory accelerator. We conclude that Pluto significantly outperforms all baselines. In terms of energy, on average across all of the workloads, Pluto reduces energy by 3,000 3, times uh, compared to the CPU 60, and 65 times uh, compared to the GPU. We conclude that Pluto significantly reduces energy consumption compared to the processor centric architectures. You can check our paper for more results, including comparison with GPAs, area overhead analysis, circuit level reliabilities, and many more. Next, I'm going to conclude. I would like to conclude by summarizing Pluto's key points. Pluto's operation relies on the Pluto loop query operation, a new proposed operation that introduces support for the arbitrary execution of complex operations in a processing using memory architecture. We introduced three different designs that exploit different trade-offs points in terms of performance, energy efficiency, and error efficiency. To facilitate programmers' adoption, we truly describe the integration of the Pluto substrate with the host system. Pluto greatly outperform processor and memory centric architectures while incurring small area overheads. If you are interested in learning more about PIM, I invite you to check our PIM course, which are fully available online. And if you are interested in other aspects of the memory architecture, you can also check our SSD courses and the RAM course, which are focused on security and we also focus on the security implications of memory devices through the raw hammer. We can also check our recent tutorials on real pin systems at ISCO 2023, ASPRO 2023, HPCA 2023, and the upcoming tutorial at Micro 2023, which will happen on, on October 29th. Thank you for your attention.